As I've talked about many times, Stardew Valley is a game full of details that the average player will never know or take advantage of. When I did my full playthrough of the game while working towards the perfection ending, which is essentially completing everything the game has to offer, I learned many things that would have made my playthrough a lot easier. I'm going to pass all of that knowledge on to you so that you can make the most of your playthrough. As a note, I'm going to be ordering all of these tips from early game to late game so you can dip out if things start to get a little too spoilery for you. Hopefully you learn at least one thing you never knew about, let's get started. At the very beginning of the game, when you cut weeds, there's a 5% chance that you'll drop mixed seeds. When planted in spring, these will randomly grow into either parsnips, potatoes, or cauliflower. On average, a mixed seed grown into a low quality crop will make you 97 gold. For reference, buying a cauliflower seed outright will net you 95 gold once grown. This is great for the early game when you don't have enough gold to buy as many crops as you would like. Utilize it. Speaking of gold on day one, what's the best use of that day one gold? You might know that potatoes are the best gold per day value of one plot of land for the beginning of spring, but consider this. With that 500 gold, you can either buy 10 potatoes or 25 parsnips. The 10 potatoes will give you 140 farming experience and likely give you somewhere from 800 to 960 gold, depending on how many doubles you get, because potatoes have like a one fourth chance to give you a double and that will take six days to grow. 25 parsnips will give you 200 experience and give you a guaranteed 875 gold while only taking four days to grow. That along with the fact that they'll be ready at the same time as those 15 freebie parsnips you get when starting makes this a unique situation where parsnips are actually the best crop to buy. On top of that, buying a harvest of parsnips and then buying a harvest of potatoes will sell on the 11th which is just in time. On spring 15th through 18th, salmon berries can be found growing on bushes around the valley. While they're cheap and don't restore much when eaten, it's possible to get a ton of them over these four days. Every four foraging levels, each bush will drop an extra berry. So two berries at level four, three berries at level eight, and four at level 12, which can be reached if you use food to boost your level. If you're conscious of it, you should be able to squeeze level 4 foraging before spring 15th and get that benefit. Gather enough of these salmon berries and they can last till the end of the year as an energy source. Listen, this one might sound a little silly. Once you buy the backpack upgrade, the tab button will swap your inventory bar. See, you're laughing. Shifting the toolbar on PC wasn't even possible until version 1.4 released, and I remember the pain of having to adjust my inventory all the time. If this helps just one person, it'll be worth it. If you have a chest full of items that you want to move, you can hit it a few times with an empty hand to push it one tile over. This was actually added in version 1.5. Chests can be placed just about anywhere. Just make sure it's not in a villager's path or it'll be destroyed. Personally, I like to keep one outside of the mines. It helps a lot when you have a small inventory. One last chest tip. Make a sorting system. As you progress through the game, you're going to unlock many crafting recipes, new bundles, and buildings that require different resources to complete. So don't sell every item you find. Start organized, and stay organized. Otherwise, things will get really messy later on. There are a few items that I wouldn't recommend donating to the museum right as you get them. These items include the prismatic shard and the dinosaur egg. These items have better uses that you're better off using them for. Donate the second one whenever you find it. Pathways may seem purely aesthetic, but they do have quite a few uses. Any type of pathing provides a 0.1 boost to speed while walking on top of it. This only applies on the farm. It also will prevent any weeds, grass, or trees from growing in that spot. I find it useful to make a path down to the southern exit of the farm so that grass and trees don't grow in the way. If you have an item that can be donated to the community center, if your cursor is over it, this icon will pulse in and out. This can save you a lot of time scrolling through all those bundles. Consider saving your cheap fish instead of selling them right away. Once you reach three hearts with Linus, you'll obtain the sashimi recipe, which only has one ingredient, fish. Sashimi sells for 75 gold, so any fish you have that sells for less than that will be worth cooking into sashimi. Here's a useful table for determining when you should cook a fish to sashimi or just sell it. Courtesy of the Stardew Valley Wiki, the link will be in the description. Also, be careful what fish you have in your inventory when you cook sashimi. You don't want to accidentally cook like a legendary fish or something. Pickaxes can undo tilled soil. 
This will allow you to get even more drops from the same patch of soil. This is especially useful if you're trying to get items from hoeing soil in the mines where it isn't as common, or if you accidentally hoed a spot on your farm where you want to place an object. Speaking of hoeing, there is a way to manipulate the game to give you clay every time you hoe a spot. This is achieved through a method called clay farming. Essentially, find a spot that gives you clay. If you like, you can keep hoeing the same spot and pickaxing that spot over and over again until it gives you some clay. Now you have a bit of a pattern you want to follow. Move two spots to the right, and then one up, hoe that spot. Continue that pattern until you have six spots hoed, and then move directly left from your last spot until you're above the spot you started at. Do the two to the right, one up pattern four times here. Then go to the spot directly above where you started. Do the exact same pattern again. Once you complete the pattern the second time, your next starting point is going to be three spots to the right of your initial starting point. And then you can repeat the entire pattern. Essentially, I like to think of it as just making a bunch of squigglies one square at a time. Also, if you're ever unable to hoe a spot that you need to hoe, just hoe one spot anywhere else and that will skip that spot essentially. And then you can continue the pattern on from there. The same rule applies if you accidentally hoe the incorrect spot, just skip whatever spot you were aiming for and move on. Also important to remember, it's not a 100% drop rate for clay when you do this, it's just extremely high, so don't worry if it skips a few spots. While this method is a little complicated, getting a lot of clay very early can net you tons of money. Each clay sells for only 20 gold, but you can easily get hundreds of clay through this method in a day. Shooting a villager with the slingshot will reduce their friendship with you. This is useful for when you give Penny Glass shards and she ends up liking it. You can stuff a lot into that slingshot, so get creative. You can place grass starter under a fence. Any grass that grows on the same tile as the fence will still spread, but cannot be eaten by the animals. This will ensure that your animals never eat you dry. This next one isn't necessarily a tip, but more of a clarification. You may see online that if you stay up after 6pm, your animal's happiness will start decreasing. This was a bug back before version 1.3, it is no longer the case. Additionally, if you close the door on an animal before it gets in and you go to sleep, there is a chance they will be attacked by a wild animal and disappear. Now for the misunderstanding about it. If your animals are inside and the door is closed, there is a 0% chance they will be attacked by a wild animal. If the door is open, the chance is still 0%, just don't lock them out of the building and you're good. There is no deficit to animal happiness by leaving the door open overnight. Yes, even if it's winter. Yes, even if it's raining. Yes, even if you're on the wilderness farm. Spread it around everyone. Honey is one of the easiest and best money makers. You get the recipe for bee houses at level 3 farming. Every 4 days they will produce honey, which on its own isn't worth much. But if you plant a flower nearby, the honey will increase in value according to that specific flower's sale price. Honey will be worth 100 plus 2 times the price of the flower. In spring, you'll want a blue jazz for 200 gold per honey, in summer a poppy for 380 gold, and in fall a fairy rose for 680 gold. And this isn't even counting the artisan profession. A bee house near a fairy rose produces more gold per day than any crop in the entire game, all while being super easy to set up. Once a flower is grown, unlike other crops, it does not need to be continuously watered. This is the area that you can place the bee house to get the benefits from the flower. Be creative here, there's a ton of nice looking designs for your honey farm. Tap those trees early. You may notice that early on there's not a lot of uses for the three tree tapper items, maple syrup, pine tar, and oak resin. However, you will realize partway through the game that these give you access to the best money-making methods. Oak resin is needed for kegs and deluxe speed grow, pine tar is needed for regular speed grow, and maple syrup is needed for bee houses. Many players like to create a cute little tree farm, keeping their tapped trees in organized rows so to not lose track of them. There's a hidden path in the secret woods that leads to two more hardwood stumps. Minor, but it can save you a lot of visits when grinding for hardwood. Truffles are affected by the gatherer and botanist perks, giving a 50% chance to forage two at once, and making them all iridium quality. This makes pigs one of the best money makers in the game. If you're having trouble choosing between the botanist and tracker perks, here's a quality of the botanist path that I consider underrated. 
Since all of your forged items are of a single quality, it'll take up a lot less inventory space. And if you're foraging from bushes, normally all berries will always be normal quality. With Botanist, they'll always be Iridium. Most people know that you can buy a bouquet from Pierre and gift it to a romantic NPC at 8 hearts to start dating. But if you need to stop dating someone, you can take that bouquet, burn it in a furnace, and gift the burnt flowers to the character you're no longer interested in. Now for some meta tips. Make goals for yourself. This is more so after you've finished the community center and find yourself struggling with what to do. Every player is different and will have different goals to keep them motivated. This could be anywhere from working towards perfection, which includes completing every single shipping log, or just making an aesthetically appealing farm. Take a look into what the post-game content has to offer and decide what you'd like to do. No need to get burnt out trying to do everything. And this next one's for those of you who decided to work towards completion. Diversify. You don't always have to create the perfect min-max starfruit wine farm. Branch out and interact with the other systems in the game. On my way to perfection, I made a fun pineapple shed with a tropical theme, organized super deep skull cavern runs for insane amounts of iridium ore, I bought bunches of pigs and set up crystallariums with diamonds, and that's really just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many ways to make money outside of farming, and it helps with burnout. Oh, funnily enough, I have a guide for that. Weird. One last tip, play the game however you want. Yes, this is at odds with many of the other tips I've given, but this one's important. You have no obligation to complete the community center in year one. If you want to, that's great. If not, that's also great. Don't like that I told you to buy parsnips on day one? Fuck me, do what you want. Buy a salad, shoot villagers with explosive ore, install a mod that changes your livestock into sexy monster men. Who am I to judge? Thank you so much for watching. I hope at least one of these tips was able to help you. Real quick, if you have any tips that you think anyone should know, please put it in the comments. I like to heart comments that have information that's missing from my video because I want viewers to have accurate information no matter what. Never feel bad for correcting me as well if I've gotten something wrong. I make plenty of mistakes. See you all next time, and good night.